it's another day and um, as you can see we're in lighter gear. The weather has improved though you wouldn't actually know it. <laughs> no you would not. At uh, 5am this morning we were woken up with a uh, horrendous rain on the uh, coach roof. The boat moving very very quickly all over the place. Uh, 35 to 40 knots of wind and um, the anchor alarm going off. Yeah, but um, again, I think it was just the fact that when we put the um, anchor alarm on, we were at one side of the swing. Yes, basically we dropped the anchor. We set the anchor by driving the boat backwards and then the boat settles. We then go down and switch the alarm on. So wherever we are, we're not directly on top of the anchor. Yes, so 50 metres from there, um, which is what our distance is, is um, not necessarily um, anything that's the wrong. An the anchor wouldn't be in the middle of that six fifty meter circle because when we set the anchor, we were on that side of the anchor buoy. We're now on this side of yeah, the anchor buoy. Much closer to the five meter line. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't object to. So, uh, since that huge gale first thing this morning, the weather has got progressively better. Uh, although it's gone dark now with a heavy cloud, we have had quite a lot of blue sky today. The solar panels have done their job, the batteries are up to charge, and we're feeling a lot happier about things, aren't we? Yes, um, however, we have decided that our plans are in shreds yet again. <laughs> For the yes. umpteenth time this year. I mean, over the past few days we've had a series of storms and looking at the weather when we last checked it yesterday there's still another series of storms to come so we're going to be checking the weather later today aren't we yeah the weather for the next two days is going to be reasonable so we will be able to sail somewhere go somewhere new but our plan to continue up and go into what I class as past as new it just isn't going to happen because we're already on the 19th of... Um, 20th. Oh, okay. So we're already on the 20th of uh, August and there's not much... There's about a week and a bit left before we plan to turn around and come back anyway. Yeah, so rather than trying to flog ourselves because with another lot of storms coming... Then we just might be tied down somewhere else for four or five days and not able to do anything. Yeah. So what we've decided to do is um, we've decided to head back and I'm hoping that we will see some different anchorages on well, the way back. I'm talking online to supporters, followers, friends, things like that. And they're all having much better weather than us. <laughs> and they're all further south. A lot of the Northern Ireland boats have already quit Scotland. Um, some of them are heading through the Crinan today, tomorrow and the weekend. Some of them are just going straight down waiting for weather. But a lot seem to have packed up. Um, we've come to the conclusion that they've probably reckoned that summer's over up here. It's a shame really, I mean, so last year it did get to the end of August before summer was... Uh... We were in the middle of September by the time we got back in Belfast. Yes, but even so, the summer was over. Summer was over by the first week in September. Yes, exactly, but now we're about two weeks away from that and it's summer is done. <laughs> So although the weather has improved, it isn't brilliant and I can feel the first few spits of rain and coming up through the Loch Eileen entrance, I can see the weather. <laughs> so um, I think what we'll do is we'll get back under cover. Mm. And um, last, night, last night's Chinese dinner went down very, very well. The uh, sweet and sour pork was lovely, as was the hot and sour soup, wasn't it? It certainly was. Um, and tonight is going to be savoury mince with boiled potatoes and peas. A bit different. But... Um... Like I say, when uh, Beverly's at anchor, she loves to cook. And, and you love to sew. Well, that's what I've been doing. I've yeah. been, I'm a right so-and-so. <laughs> right, shall we get out of this before we get absolutely soaked? Please. after uh, being stuck there for a few days but our pl plans are in tatters um, we had wanted to go further up north 
but uh, realistically there's just going to be storm after storm after storm so it just doesn't look like that's going to happen it's just one of those things but Beverly had um, quite a bit of fun uh, picking up the uh, anchor but I'll let you tell her, her tell you about that but we are underway with just the Genoa um, at the moment and um, to be honest I'm happy enough I'm just happy to be out sailing and getting on with stuff oh, cup of tea underway yeah Breaking news, we interrupt this tea break to bring you news of how the anchor lift went. <laughs> uh, my concern when we were in Loch Eileen was that um, the anchor held so well in the gusts and we had a fairly short scope out of four to five thereabouts, uh, probably four and a half to five and a half depending on the tide height. Um, and we weren't moving and the chart showed that that particular area also had rock in it so we'd put the tripping line down and um, just in case the anchor wedged itself under a large rock um, my concern was that we weren't moving at all even in 35 knot gusts in, oh god there's the phone going you, honestly you can't leave an anchorage can you when it came to pick the anchor up um, we just went till the anchor chain was vertical and then tightened it. We didn't try and lift it with the, um, the windlass. We then drove the boat forward slightly, took up uh, the slack again, drove the boat forward slightly, took up the slack oh, again. And... Oh, you think miles out at sea you'd have peace, wouldn't you? But, um, so we kept doing that and then eventually all of a sudden I could see the chain moving slightly like the anchor was swinging and I knew I'd lifted it. So the good news was that our anchor was set in pure mud and it must have been set like a good one because when I brought it up that the whole of the anchor and about a meter of chain were just nothing but mud all over them the trip line's still filthy so major job when I get to open is clean up the mess but the report is that 16 kilogram delta 8 mil chain uh, about 35 meters of uh, chain out and our snubber on and we just Basically sat out four days worth of atrocious weather in it. Personally, I'm extremely pleased. The, the boat handled it well, the anchor handled it well, and I think we learned out something about ourselves in the boat and in this little manoeuvre. So, all good. Okay, before you finish, can, oh. you, can you tell us what was your issue about where you put your... You said you lifted it over the bow and then it caused an issue. Hey, what happens when the boat stays in the boat, remember? No, it doesn't. We tell them everything. Uh, because we had the tripping line over and the rest of it, I picked the boy up and I brought it up over the over the bow pulpit, as you just to keep it out of the way. And as I lifted the um, anchor, I pulled in the, the spare line. Uh, unfortunately for me, the last bit of line came in wrapped around the chain, and when the chain came through the gypsy, the line lifted the chain out of the gypsy, and the anchor went back over the bow again. Um, fortunately, it caught the chain caught in the gypsy again, and I managed to untangle it all and bring it all in a second time, but. I think that's where a lot of the mud splatters came from. So in future, the um, tripping line comes up over the side of the boat, nowhere near the chain. And if it's tangled around the chain, then we just have to wait until it's untangled because you don't want a 16 kilogram anchor jumping its gypsy. That, and you don't want to be catching chain in that situation. It's not good. Anything exciting? Well, I'm uh, in control today. And um, I'm just thinking I might change where we're going, that's all. But rather than Oban? Yeah, if we're going to Loch Spelve and then you can go into Oban. Just gives us a possibility. If I'm sailing, I'm not in any need of any fuel. 
But I'm having a look. We're in need of a lot of other things we can only get and open. I can get them tomorrow. No, you can't, because you're going to run out today. <sighs> Boring. It's true, though. Yes, we are short of milk, it has to be said. And food. We're going to do our last bit of ham. Okay, well, whatever. I was just thinking, that's all. It's a dangerous game on this boat. just um, put our main up um, because we, I wanted to have the main up to the third reef uh, we literally put it up just as we were going through the wind um, and then when I came round to the other side I actually did the long tack I could have either have done um, a jive but I made the decision to do a long tack which meant I went round three quarters of Three quarters of the circle just to do attack. Anyway, do you want to be a killjoy? Yeah, I know. If you've got a Kalmak bearing down from behind you. I know. So it's lots to do and lots to keep an eye out here in the uh, Sound of Mull coming through into the Sound of Ling. I think we better start doing it. Yeah, all right, love. Having a shower? No, I'm not. I'm trying to 